Greetings and welcome from the Vicarage to night prayer on Saturday the 4th of April. And as we come into God's presence, we're going to look at a bit of Psalm 57 and another of the names of Jesus. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. A moment's quiet as we reflect on the day. Chance to come into God's presence and review with him. I think of Adam and Eve walking in the cool of the evening uh, with God. But a chance also to get rid of anything that's besmirched our day, that's gone wrong. And let's give it to God so we can sleep well. Don't let the sun go down on anything that's outstanding. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we've sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins and help us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. And so receive the forgiveness Christ won for you on the cross. Enjoy his sense of well-being. We still works in progress, but he can be, he is pleased with us. He's easily pleased, but he's got more work to do. He's not easily satisfied. So receive the forgiveness, the cleansing, which Christ won for you on the cross. Receive it for yourself, receive it for others. And enjoy his presence. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams, defend our sight. From fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath, our souls are raised to life from death. Psalm 57. David writing, and it's when he'd fled from Saul into the cave, and he even designates what the tune is, the tune to the do not destroy. Have mercy on me, O oh my God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. <clears throat> I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Until the disaster has passed, I cry out to God Most High, to God who vindicates me. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, high upon lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And the name of Jesus we're going to look at tonight is Everlasting Father. So it comes in this Isaiah 9, 6, which we've been looking at for the last couple of nights. And uh, there are four. So this is number three of these titles, which we often think of at Christmas, don't we? For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I always think it's a it's a lovely sort of crossover, this, with the Trinity, isn't it? We think of the Father and we think of Jesus, the Son, and we think of the Holy Spirit. But here, Jesus is everlasting Father, as well as Prince of Peace, as well as the boy, the Son who was given to us, as well as Wonderful Counselor. And in a way, you wonder about the Trinity, don't you, how they are in relationship. Was it just for the purposes of salvation that one comes down to earth and the other stays in heaven and and as it were and and the holy spirit is spread abroad because they're interchangeable and I, we can't understand it the trinity is more wonderful and more marvelous and it's got a sort of um a capacity for relationship which on earth we can only envisage in very very small ways but here is jesus 
who's going to be called the Everlasting Father. They share their work, they share their being, and yet they're separate. And we can't understand it, but we can enjoy the mystery. Uh, one of the wonderful things they say about our relationships, isn't it, is that you've set eternity in our hearts. And we'll never get to the end of knowing. And some people may want to know everything. And and if they do, sometimes as they, uh, as a child grows older, you realise the world's rather big out there. And every scientist who discovers stuff then discovers there's more stuff to discover. And things are more wonderful and more highly balanced and more intricate. And so in heaven, we won't just have understanding. We'll have part of that. But what we'll have is wonder and worship because it's richer and deeper than we can ever imagine. So Jesus encompasses everlasting father. And it also encompasses motherhood. As we hear, there's another verse. And there are those things like the refuge of your wings, the idea of a mother, the chicks huddling under the mother and being safe under the feathers of the mother. So there are all these images and they all point to something which is bigger and richer than any words and any of our experience can discover. But as we go through this life, we can have more experiences. And we can, if you like, colour in the painting a bit more about who God is and what he's like. Because some bits we know by repute. And then through our lives, we may experience it. So someone who hasn't fallen in love can know about love. A child can know about love in ways, but then they don't know about falling in love until they've got that bit in their experience. And a person with an experience perhaps says the same words, but they say them with a different depth and meaning and understanding. And so often for people, it's when they have a child and they understand what it is to love something and someone when uh, they're not sort of equal at all but there's this visceral upwelling of love and that's a little picture that the the love that God has for us and there's something wonderful about a father's love and I've often also thought that fathers change as time goes on if you're a father to a young child it's very different from being a um, father to an adult child and uh, now we're grand, I'm a grandfather, and you think of, it's a very different role, but it's encompassed with everlasting father. All those different roles, the role of a father to care for and to protect, but also to encourage and be an example, the role to support as they reach out, the, the, the role of, of just marvelling and wondering at the next generation. Uh, the whole thing of fatherhood is about wanting the good of the other, isn't it? So we pray as parents that our children will be able to step on our shoulders and uh, they they do so much better than we do. And uh, isn't that wonderful to see and wonderful to uh, to have a part in that? Because it's not about building our kingdom, it's about their kingdom. And so the everlasting father has this angle of God that God so wants us to flourish, so wants us to take our part. So he's given us huge responsibilities to steward the earth. To Adam and Eve, it was to subdue the earth and give names to animals and, and, and a huge responsibility. And in heaven, we'll have huge responsibility too. Uh, don't you know, Paul says, that uh, when you're in heaven, you'll be ruling cities. So how we live now is really important too. And so with an everlasting father, we don't need to worry that's the bit that Jesus picks up in the Gospels, isn't it? You've got a heavenly father who watches over you. But also we're to grow into what the father wants us to do. And we're to listen to the father's wisdom. But we have a choice. We have freedom to come to him. So as this prophecy was looking forward to Jesus coming, so we now look back and we recognise in Jesus this amazing, amazing person, human with all the, the wonderfulness of that. And yet we get glimpses of there's much more um, as Jesus walked on water. Um, there's, there's much more for us and there's much more to explore of God. So as we sleep, we can leave our futures, our lives in the hands of the everlasting Father who cares for us and who's all wise and all knowing. 
and we can, if you like, give our responsibilities to him and ask for him to show us what we need to do and when so that we don't hurry through the world but we go at his pace, keeping in step with his spirit. Amen. So let's pray. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you've redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And so, Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we will place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we pray for our world, Father, thank you for the resources that people have and have risen to in so many ways. Thank you for all the medical stuff, but all the, all the civil servants trying to implement decisions and processes and changes, all the business folk adapting to what changes that might take years are happening in a few weeks. Father, we pray for wisdom in those when there isn't the same scrutiny and same chance to toss it around and think of it from different angles. Father, we pray, and we pray particularly for your provision for those on the front line. We pray too for all those who are in dark places at present, that they would know your peace and your comfort. For all those who grieve, for all those fearful with themselves or others ill. Father, draw close to them and we pray for your healing. And Father, we pray for the countries of the world to pull together as we pray for communities to pull together, as we pray for families to pull together. But we also pray for the restoration of people's souls. So we pray for sleep, for rest for those who are worn out and stressed. And we pray that they may be guided by you as to what's the next thing to do in each situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In peace we'll lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in a knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Hoping you have good sleep, knowing God cares for you. And if he wakes you, that he know what to pray for, and to be able to pray for his coming kingdom to come more and more in these days. Bye-bye.